In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to use curves for beginners. So curves can be used to create many things like cords or wires. You can create things like vines and rope, also hair, pipes, and tubes. So I'm just gonna delete everything and then I'll go to the add menu and you can go right down here to curve and you can see there are some different curve objects. So I'm just gonna add the basic one here, the BZA curve, that's the default curve, which you'll probably use the most. So let's just zoom into the curve. Now the first thing you're probably wondering about the curve is how to actually give it thickness so that it looks like a tube or a pipe because right now it's just kind of this line here and if you try to render this you won't actually be able to see anything in the render because it doesn't have any visible faces. So if you select the curve and then click right over here to go to the object data properties you can go down here to geometry and then you can scroll down here to the bevel and you can turn up this bevel depth. So if I turn this up now you can see it looks more like a noodle because it actually has some thickness. Now we'll be going over a bunch of these settings later but I just wanted to let you know about that bevel depth because that's probably something that beginners definitely want to know. It's one of the most useful things to know about curves but I will go over the other settings later in the video. Now curves don't act like regular mesh objects. If I click here on object mode, you can see unlike other mesh objects, these objects only have an edit mode and an object mode. So they don't have the sculpting mode or weight painting or other modes like that. So let's just hit tab to go into edit mode. Now you can see even though the object does have visible geometry, it doesn't actually have vertices or edges or faces. Instead, curve objects have these curve handles. So this is the curve point. You you can see there's a little dot there which you can select to move around the entire thing and then on either side they have curve handles so you can drag the handles around to kind of change the rotation of that handle or you can select the middle one to move it all around and just like other things in blender you can hit s to scale g to grab and r to rotate now if you select the end point of a curve handle, so select a point here, you can hit E to extrude and that's going to extrude out a point. And then you can just continue to model the shape of this. So if you're modeling like a cord or maybe a tube or a pipe or something, you can hit E to extrude and just extrude out the curve handles. Now if you wanna fill two handles together to make it connect, you can just hold down the shift key and select both handles and then hit the F key and that is going to fill them together. So now you can see it's looping all around but I'll hit Control Z to undo that. Now what you can also do is with a curve handle selected, you can Control right click. So if you Control right click, that is going to extrude it out and rotate it and stick it to that point. Now I use the right click select in Blender, so I Control left click to do that, but for most people who use the left click select in Blender, it's Control right click. Now you can also subdivide the curve and add basically another curve handle in between two curve points. So if I hold down the shift key and select these two here, I can use the object context menu and I can click on subdivide. You can also click right up here on segments and then you can click on subdivide. So now you can see there's another one in the center of these two. And if you wanna separate some of these curve points into their own object, you can just select both of them and then you can hit P and that's going to separate it into its own object. So back in object mode, you can see now this is its own object. Now there's also a cool draw feature in the edit mode of the curves where you can draw curves. So if I hit the T key to open up the side panel, make sure you're in edit mode of a curve, you can click right here on here on the draw curves. Now I can just kind of draw along here, draw around, and then when I let go, you can see a curve is now going to appear at that point. Now there's also different handle types, so you can change the different type of handle to make the curve act differently. So if I just hit the A key to select all the curve handles, you can hit the V key and there's gonna be a different handle types. So let me first use automatic. So with automatic, you can see it kind of turned yellow, but if I select this and kind of move it around, it's gonna turn kind of back to that red color. So this is basically just the default one. If I select everything again and hit V, I can also use vector. So with vector, you can see it's gonna be very straight, so there isn't any curving. However, I can select the curve handles and move them, and now there's a bit more of a curving here. So if I want that to be a bit more smooth, I could rotate these. But you can see with the vector type, I can move this handle, and I can move this handle and they're different. So they're gonna move at different positions. Whereas if I selected this handle and I hit V and change it to automatic, you can see if I drag this handle, the other handle is gonna also move. Whereas with this type, the vector, these different handles can be at different points. So we'll select all of them again and hit V again. There's also aligned, which is gonna be pretty much the same as the default one here. Let's also hit V again and there's also free. So with free, you can see if I just drag this down here, again, it's kind of similar to 
a vector where I can move the handles at separate rotations. Let's select everything again, V, and there's also just toggling between free and align, but most of the time I just use automatic, which is the default. So let's go over more curve settings on the side panel. So if you select the object, you can click here to go to the object data properties, and there's a bunch of different settings to change the curve. So if I click on the 2D, what it's going to do, it's going to flatten the curve. So you can now see the curve is super flat. If I go into edit mode and just kind of try to pull this around, you can see the curve is totally flat and I can't move it up and down on the Z axis. So maybe that would be useful if you're creating like a logo or something and you just want it to be perfectly flat, but I usually just keep it at 3D so that I can move it around in the 3D space. So as I mentioned earlier, if you go to geometry and go to bevel, you can change the bevel depth and that'll make it more thick and more thin. Now what you can also do is go into edit mode and you can select a curve handle and you can hit Alt S. So Alt S is gonna change the size of just that curve handle. So you can make it thicker or thinner, make some parts thicker, some parts thinner. Instead of having the entire thing thicker and thinner, each individual curve handle can be thicker and thinner by just using Alt S. Now there's also a resolution here. So right now you can see it's set to four. If I turn it way down to like zero, you can see now it's gonna be like a square shape. If I want it to be very smooth, I can turn this way up to a really big number. And so now it's pretty smooth. There's also a fill cap. So if I check mark the fill caps, now it's actually going to fill a face there at the very end of the curve. Now let's go into edit mode and I'm gonna go here to the end. So let's go to top view and I'll bring this out here and then it will extrude it and kind of rotate it. So you can see if I rotate this, let me just scale this up here and scale this up. If this has a really sharp angle here, you can see that right here, it's a little bit jagged. I added a lot of resolution kind of back and forth like this, but I also wanna add some resolution while it's rotating around. So to add more resolution to this, you can open up the active spline here and you can see there's this resolution U. So if I turn this up now, it's going to add more detail detail or less detail so I could make it really low poly or I can turn this up and it's going to add more details to those curves and you can also do this by going up here to the top and there's also this resolution preview here so I can also turn this up and that'll do the same thing and also right here under active spline there's also this smooth button so if I turn this off you can see now it's like showing you the visible faces of the mesh or I can just smooth it so if you want to get like a low poly look you can kind of do that and keep it flat but I'm going to shade it smooth. Now, if you scroll back up to the top here, there is a fill mode. So if I just go over here to the sides, you can see it. You can see there is full, there's also back. So now there's just gonna be kind of like this back part, which is showing. There's also front, so that's gonna just show this part here, or there's also half. And so with this one, you can see half of it is kind of cut out and it's open, but I usually just keep it to full. Now, if you scroll right down here towards the bottom, there's also shape keys. And so what you can basically do with shape keys is you can sort of add a simple animation where one of the curve points is moving and then you can move it back and forth. So let me just click on the plus here to add a new shape key. Let me just drag this up here so you can see it better. So there is the basis shape key and that's just how it is on default. Then I'll click on the plus here to add a new key. So I can now hit the tab key to go into edit mode. And so we hit tab to go into edit mode with that key one selected. So I can now maybe move this and scale it, something like that. And then if I go back to object mode, you can see it moves back to the basis. So now if you click on key one, there is a value. So if I change the value, that's gonna blend between using the key one, which I added here on key one, or keeping it all the way back at the basis. So you could use this for simple animations. But I'm just going to delete the shape keys. I'm not gonna use them in this video. Now there's also a start and end mapping, so I can open this up. And so there is an end point and there's a start point. So you can see if I just turn this up here, even if I go into edit mode, you can see there actually is a curve point right here, so it's still there, but the visible part of the mesh or the visible part of the curve is going to end sooner. So you could also use this if you want to like animate something. If you want to animate something kind of moving along, you can have the start and the end. Now, if you go right up here to the top of the geometry tab, there's a few other settings. So there's an offset. So if I turn this up, it's going to offset it from where the curve originally was. So if you go into edit mode, you can see here are the curve points, but it's basically offset. But I usually don't use that. I don't find it too useful. So I'll turn the offset back to zero. There's also this extrude value. And so what this will do is it'll just make it longer on one angle. So you can see I can like rotate this around. I can select both of these and kind of rotate them. So you can see it's basically going to extrude up and make it long. So this is almost like maybe like a ribbon shape or something like that. But I'm gonna turn the extrude back to zero. Now you can see there is a taper object and a taper radius. 
So if you choose another object for the taper object, that is actually gonna change the shape of how it gets smaller and smaller towards the end. So for an example, I'll go to the add menu and I'll add curve and I'll add another Bezier curve. And let's just drag this over here. So now if I select the original curve again, if I click on the taper object, let's click on the eyedropper here, I can now choose this curve. And in the taper object, you can't actually choose mesh objects, you have to choose another curve object. So now that I've added this curve into the taper object, you can see it actually keeps the same shape as this object here. So if I just hit seven on the numpad to go to top view, let me just show you. So I'll drag this down here and I'll go into edit mode. So you can see there is the origin point right there. So over here on this side, that is gonna be the shape of the taper. So if I rotate this, you can see it's gonna be a little bit thicker. Let me just bring this up here. So you can kind of see that taper shape is now changing the shape of the tapering. So I can like select this, drag it over, drag this over here so now you can see it looks a bit thicker. So this is just a nice way to change the shape of the taper. But let's just select this object and we're gonna delete it because there's another way to change the shape of the curve, but that's gonna be the length of the curve instead. So to do this, we wanna go down here to the bevel type. So the default one is round, so I can just change the depth here to make it thicker, and I can also change the resolution of the bevel. However, instead of round, there's also object and profile. So let's go to object first. So with the object, I can do basically the same thing kind of as the taper object, so I can add another object, and then that object is gonna be the shape. So if I go to the add menu, we do need to add curve objects for this. So for example, I could add the circle. So let's add the circle curve. So if I go into edit mode, you can see this is pretty much the same thing. It's a curve, but it's just shaped in an exact circle. So if we select the original object again, let's go to the object here on the bevel, and we'll click on the eyedropper and choose this curve. So now you can see it's gonna keep the shape of this object. So if I go into edit mode, I can scale this down. It's gonna scale it. I can also make it like longer. It's gonna be wider. And I can also make like some really interesting shapes. So I could maybe drag this up here. Let's maybe rotate it a bit. We can also select these two and subdivide them, and we can just make some really interesting shapes here. So you could do a lot of really cool things with this and change the shape of your curve. Now there's also this profile type. So if I change it to profile, you can see that we have this curve here. And so I can change this curve here. It's basically like a 2D curve. And I can change this to change the shape of our 3D curve. So if I just click here, it's gonna add a dot and I can drag this dot around. I can also click here to add another dot and like drag this down. Click here to add another one and drag it up. I can also get rid of dots by clicking on the X here. And you can see I can create a really cool shape. So I can create like a star shape or something like that. And this always reminds me of whipped cream from a can. So you know how you can like get those cans which have whipped cream in them and you can like spray it over ice cream or some kind of dessert and it kind of has that little star shape that's kind of what it reminds me of so you could use this to maybe create some whipped cream over a 3d rendered dessert now I'm just going to delete everything because I now want to show you the other curve objects. So if I go to the add menu, I can go here to curve and we already talked about the Bezier curve. That's kind of the default one. I can also go to the add menu and add the circle curve. So we used this one before. It's pretty much the exact same thing, except it's already a perfect circle. There's also a few other ones like this NURBS curve and NURBS circle, which I really don't use these, but you can see this one, it basically just gives you a little bit more control because it has like another curve right here or it has another curve handle on the end, but you can see it's still smooth. And then there's also this one, which is actually pretty useful, and this one is a path. So if I add the path here, you can see it's gonna be perfectly straight, so that's pretty nice to start out with a perfectly straight one. Also, if I go into edit mode, you can see these handles act a little bit different. So if I go to top view, let's just really quick go down here to geometry, we'll go to the bevel and just turn this up so that you can kind of see it better. So now if I go into edit mode and drag this around, you can see is going to move the mesh around, but these points points here, they don't have any handles, and it's a lot more smooth. So you can see, even though I drag this way down here and drag this way up here, this type here, the path type, is gonna keep it very smooth. And also these points here don't have curve handles. You can just move them around, but they don't have curve handles. But you can still extrude them and move them around just like you would with the other objects. Now there's also a built-in Blender extension which allows you to enable a lot more curves. So if I click on edit and go to the preferences, I'm gonna click here on get extensions and I can type in curve and you can see there is this extra curve objects. So you can just make sure you install this, so just install it and then once it's installed over here on the add-ons tab, I can just search for curve and just make sure you enable it. It should already be enabled. So the extra curve objects. So now that you've enabled that built-in extension, if I go to the add menu and go here to curve, you can see there's gonna be a lot more curve objects. So there is this like curly one here. So you can see that's gonna just give you like a base curly shape. 
And right after you add the curve, if you click right here, right behind me or right above me, you can see there's different settings here. So you can change like the curve type. So you can kind of change that and make it look different. And there's a bunch of different settings you can play around with. Let's just delete this one. There's a bunch more ones, which I'm not gonna go over all of them because there's so many of them. But a few ones which I find kind of useful is like the spiral. So you can add like a spiral here. So you can see if I add this, I need to click here to open up the settings here. And then I have the amount of turns. And then I can also change the height. So you can see I can turn this around and then turn up the height here. You can now see we basically created kind of like a spring shape. Also, if I just add the same spiral again, what I could do is just turn the turns down here and then I can change the radius growth. So you can see if I turn the radius growth down, as it kind of comes up, it's going to get smaller and smaller. So this is actually a really great way to add Christmas lights to a Christmas tree. So if you're creating like a Christmas tree in Blender and you want to add a curve object and then add lights to the curve, you can just create this and then you don't have to manually extrude and rotate it all around. You could just stick this here in a Christmas tree. And another cool one, if you go to spirals, you can choose this second spiral here. And you can see this one is gonna be a really big spiral that just gets bigger and bigger. And I can like change the radius so I can make it a lot smaller, something like that. So you can see what that one does. There's also like some primitive shapes. If I go here to like profiles, you can see there's like a flower profile. So you can see if I add this one, this curve object is a little bit different because it actually has like filled faces, but I can drag this around and this is a kind of a cool way to create kind of like vector shapes. So there's a bunch of different curve presets which you might find useful using that extension. Now you can also animate objects along a path. So you can actually make an object be animated and follow along a path's position. And so if you want to learn how to do that, I just recently posted a video on how to do that. So I'll have a link in the video description on that video on how to animate an object along a curve. And I also have another tutorial on how to deform an object along a curve. So in this example, in this tutorial, which I posted, I have a long street and I wanna be able to use a curve to actually rotate it along the street. You can also do the same thing with train tracks. So I made some railroad tracks and I used the same method where I added a curve and then the railroad tracks follow the curve. So if you wanna check out that video, then I'll have links in the video description to both of those videos. Now, just like other objects in Blender, you can also add modifiers to curves. However, you're not able to add all modifiers. So not all modifiers are supported on curves, but there are quite a few modifiers which are supported. So if you go here to the modifier properties, I can add modifier and I could, for example, add like a mirror modifier and let's just bring this over here, kind of bring it out. You can also hit control two to add the subdivision surface modifier if you want to give it more geometry. And you could also, for example, add like the array modifier. So there are a lot of modifiers which are supported on curves. And then finally, let's say that you want to convert your curve object to a mesh object so that you can maybe do sculpting on it or do UV unwrapping or just edit the mesh using actual vertices, edges, and faces. Well, you can actually just easily convert your object. So right now it's a curve, so I can't actually edit the vertices or edges or faces, but I can just click on object and I can just click on convert and I can just click on mesh so I can convert it to a mesh. So now if I go into edit mode, you can see it is a normal mesh object with like sculpt mode and all the other modes. And it also has vertices. It also has has edges and it also has faces, just like a regular object. Another way to easily convert the curve is to just press Control A, and you can click on the visual geometry to mesh, and now you can see it's gonna be converted to a regular mesh object. So that's all the basics of how to use curves in Blender. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch some of my other curve videos, I'll have the links to those in the description. So I have a video where I create railroad tracks and then I actually make the railroad tracks follow a curve. I also have a video where I show you how to deform objects along a curve, like this street, which I have rotating along a curve. And I also have a video on how you can animate objects along a curve. If you wanna check out those other videos, I'll have the links in the video description. And if you'd like to help support this YouTube channel, channel, a great way to do that is by joining my Patreon page where you can help support the channel monthly and get access to lots of Blender content. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.